Hello and welcome into the next verse. My name is George, and if this is your first time here or you've been here before but haven't subscribed yet, well, come on, it's Christmas. Subscribe, join join the next verse party here. We got some interesting stuff for you tonight. Something very very special. I have my son. He did some data mining for you guys to show you the correlation between assists and wins to explain how, why the Knicks win and why the Knicks lose. We may have found some interesting nuggets to explain all that and maybe who possibly should be more of a primary facilitator on this team. Okay, well now we're gonna get into the juicy part of this video, let's go. All right, what you're looking at here are the statistics of the rotation players broken out between the wins and the losses. The top row right there is the wins. The bottom row, losses. The, the, the columns that are above Jalen Brunson's head are the differentials. And I'm pointing, I'm, I'm highlighting the points differential, the field goal percentage differential, the three point percentage differential, the rebound dif differential, and the assist differential. They're all connected, and we're gonna show you exactly how. Here we go. So. When it comes down to points differential in wins, the most significant three players are Randall, Barrett, and Josh Hart. Each of them are two plus points more in wins than they are in losses. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but in its aggregate, they are. Right there, it's basically seven points. Seven points is a huge swing, especially when you consider Jalen Brunson is almost even. He is so consistent, and this is the best argument for him being a superstar. He this this makes him a superstar because he gives you a narrow band of excellence. He his variance isn't that great. He'll have games of 21, 22, 23, 24, and then he'll have a 40, then he'll have a 50, then he'll have a 38. Then he but he keeps constantly giving you production, high level production, but his wins, he averages 26 points a game and his losses he averages 25. 0.1 points per game. So it's a 0 0.9 swing right there. Quickly, 1.4. That is significant as well. As well as Dante DiVincenzo, 1.4. So in wins, the players obviously are going to score more points because it's a win. So that's kind of no brainer, right? But as you move further on down, field goal differential. Look at Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo. They are shockingly different when it comes to wins and losses. They average, Josh Hart averages 16.3% better in wins, and Dante DiVincenzo is 15.2% better. Josh Hart shoots 52.9% in wins, and in losses, he shoots 36.6%. Now, Dante DiVincenzo, 51% in wins, in losses, 35%. So, it's a huge swing right there. When those guys are connecting and they're on, the Knicks are very tough to beat, very tough to beat. But also look at Randall up there, 9.5. I looked at 10 points, a 10 percentage point swing as like the the, the threshold before I would bold it and make it significant. But really 9.5 is incredibly significant. Now, Brunson, 6.8. That's a nice swing. Quickly, 5.2. RJ Barrett, 6.9. So all those guys, and then you look at Mitch Robinson, of course. In wins, Mitch shoots 10%, almost 11% better than he does in losses. But as we move further to the right, the three-point differential, let me make this larger for you guys. All right, here we go. So now three-point differential. This is obviously higher, more swings because when guys just don't have it one night, they can go 0 for 6, 0 for 9, and uh, that's going to severely impact their field goal percentage. So and usually when they're, when they're missing, putting up goose eggs, that amounts to losses. That's like pretty basic, right? So uh, Randall's a 10.1% swing when they win. Uh, Brunson is insane. <laughs> Brunson shoots 57% when the Knicks win. When we lose, Brunson shoots 28.4%. There is a direct correlation between Jalen Brunson hitting his threes and winning right there. So right there, that is a key factor. That is a key Key stat right there. When Brunson hits his threes, the Knicks win. So anytime we see Brunson going like 0 for 3 or 1 for 4 in that first half, 1 for 5 or whatever, you can start sweating a little bit and thinking maybe this is not a game we're going to pull off unless one of the other guys come through like a Dante DiVincenzo. Look at him. 14.5% swing 
when uh, in three point shots when he's on, Knicks win. RJ Barrett, it's the same, 11.3. So Randall, Brunson, and RJ, you can throw Josh Hart as well in there because he's a 9.6. Now, quickly, interestingly enough, in wins and losses, almost the same. In wins, he averages 37.2%. In losses, he averages 36.7%. So the four key guys, actually five, I'm going to throw Josh Hart in there as well. And obviously, I mean, that's a no-brainer again, right? So you're like, George, why is this so important? Let me keep going. Rebounding differential. Now, that one is pretty much even. I'm not really going to focus on that, but now the assist differential. And then I'm going to bring my son in who's going to explain what this means. He has this data. It's really fascinating, and I'm, I'm sure you guys are going to dig it, and I'm going to come back to this. So let's go to him now. Hey, everybody. This is Dylan Isguera. I'm going to be talking to you about some Nick statistics. Let's take a look at how our top players' assists influence our chances of winning. So what I kind of have summarized here is the correlation of our top players getting an extra assist or getting an assist with our chances of winning. Here we can see that RJ Barrett, followed by Julius Randle and Emmanuel Quickly, are our top uh, contributors in terms of how influential their assist is to us getting a, a win. We can see here that this correlation column Anything positive Sorry. is them getting an assist is a positive contributor to us getting a win. And we can see that the two highest are RJ Barrett and Julius Randle. And they are highest by a pretty significant margin, followed by IQ. And then after that, we have a couple of guys that are more kind of neutral on whether or not their assists are super beneficial for us winning. Those are Dante, Josh Hart, and interestingly, Jalen Brunson and uh, Quentin Grimes. And then we have two people who actually have negative influence of them getting assist or winning. The other thing to be aware of here is the p-value column. This is a statistical measure that tells you what's the probability that correlation we're getting would occur due to just randomness. So the idea here is a lower p-value means it's more trustworthy. So you see that this RJ and Julius Randall, they're high correlations, also very low p-values, meaning that those are trustworthy statistics, not just random coincidence. But then you can see that the negative ones, like our centers there having assists be negative towards us winning, those are not as high p-values. They're probably just kind of random coincidence. And then a lot of our more neutral correlation players like Dante, J Jalen Brunson, Quinton Grimes, those also have higher p-values, meaning it's less certain. They, they're they more consistent. We can't really say as much about their assists effect on winning. But the biggest insight here is R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, and uh, Emmanuel Quickly, their assists have a high correlation to us winning, meaning we need to have them uh, be in positions to get more assists. The next thing we have here is uh, same tracking of assists and that relationship to winning. This is another way to look at it in terms of how an extra assist by one of our players affects your odds ratio, ratio so your odds of winning. You can see here that RJ Barrett, the odds ratio effect is 2.2, meaning that him getting one more assist actually doubles your chances of winning. That is a very significant factor. You can see also by the p-value there that that's another trustworthy statistic. IQ and Julius Randle, their odds ratio of 1.6 means you have a 60% higher chance of winning when they score another assist. That's also very, very good. For this statistic, something that's closer to one is kind of just neutral. It means your chances of winning kind of stay the same when they get an extra assist. That's this Dante, Quentin Grimes, Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson scenario. So Brunson having this value is not necessarily a bad thing. Personally, I think it's just a consistency thing, which is good for, for our star point guard. I mean, he's getting similar amount of uh, assists in our wins and our losses. And then something lower than one, those are our two centers again, like we saw earlier with the negative correlation. These actually decrease your chances of winning as them getting more assists. So that's my insight for looking into the relationship between assists and winning from our main players. I think that the biggest insight here is RJ Barrett. His assists really, really matter. He should be in a facilitating role. Okay, so you just heard my son explain that when RJ is put in a more facilitator role, the Knicks win. And by by pretty dramatic 
uh, percentages. So here, Randall in us also Randall as well. Randall, Randall, Quickly, and RG are the key players for in terms of assists, impact directly correlating to wins. Randall, when he when we win, Randall averages six point one assists per game. When we lose, he's down to four point one. Seems pretty obvious, right? Because that's he's trying to maybe hero ball it more. Uh, then you're thinking, wait, no, is that no, George? That maybe just guys aren't hitting their shots, right? You're saying that when the Knicks lose, uh, guys like Dante and Josh Hart and RJ they shoot lo a lot worse. True, that is true. But the next slide is going to change everything for you. <laughs> Get ready. This is the assist to wins correlation chart, right there. Fifteen wins. Look at the passes, 282.2 .2 passes is what the Knicks average in their wins. They only average 263.6 in their losses. That's an 18.6 differential. And look at the assists. The assists in wins, they average 26.2, which is close to the desired mark of 27 is where they should be to be a top level team, a contending team. They need to be up to 27. Well, when they win, they act like one. They share the ball, 26.2% uh, 26.2 assists in those in those games. In the losses, they're down to 20 and a half for a differential of 5.7. And look at the secondary assists. That is the hockey assist. In hockey assists, in wins, they're up to 4.1. In losses, they're down to 2.8. That's a swing of 1.3. Assists, points created. Look at this. 67.9 points created from assists compared to in losses 51.4 that's a swing of 16.5 that is dramatic that's the swing between a win and a loss and now the a field goal percentage in wins the, the team averages 40 almost 50 percent from the field in losses they're down to about 42 percent that's almost an eight point swing in field goal percentage from wins to losses three three point percentage is even more dramatic they average 43.2% in wins and 30.8% in losses. That's a 12, almost a 12 and a half uh, percentage point swing. Now, what does this mean? How, 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 why am I saying what I'm saying? Well, it's pretty clear when you look at this, that when the ball moves more, they get higher percentage shots, which correlates to higher percentage makes, which correlates to more points, which correlates to wins it's pretty simple and the guy that needs the ball that needs to begin to be start being more facilitator on this team is rj one of the things in those in that beginning of the season those first eight games or so i can't remember how many were but like eight games when he was just leveling up he was amazing one of the amazing things he was doing was distributing the ball at the right moments he wasn't pushing it he wasn't forcing it he wasn't getting blocked as often as you, as you guys can remember now maybe he's lost a little bit of a step a little bit of conditioning from the migraines he couldn't do much but you know what there's been enough games since he should be getting back to it so i'm hoping he will but look at this this is proof that the key to winning winning for the knicks is sharing the ball more that is the key if they can average like 200 over 280 passes per game It'll, it will translate into 26 to 27 assists per game, which will translate into higher shooting percentages. It's just no-brainer. This is the key right here. So this is the thing that the Knicks have to start doing all the time. It can't be like, oh, we're going to go away from it and do iso ball for a little while here and there. No. Of course, there's always a time for iso ball. There's always a moment for that. But if this team wants to be a serious team that can win, it needs RJ Randall and quickly to start sharing the ball more. And then when it comes to quickly, it's pretty obvious, guys. It's pretty obvious, especially when you look at. All right, this right here. When you look here, I heart quickly, Randall, RJ, and Brunson need to be the starting five while Mitch is on the sidelines. That just has to happen, right there. I mean, there's no reason to do do it any other way. The data's there. I'm sure Thibs has, a, has this data for him. So let's see if he'll finally make this move. All right. Woo. Thank you guys for watching this. Again, my name is George. Uh, that was my son, Dylan. Uh, thank you guys for watching this. We appreciate it. I want to hear your comments. Drop your note, your comments, and hit the thumbs up button for us and subscribe. And uh, I will see you around the next bird.